Hi, I'm Jason Gray, and in this book breakdown, we're going to be looking at John Maxwell's brand new book, The Power of Five for Network Marketing. If you like network marketing, if you're considering building a business there, taking a look at it, uh, wanting to understand why people might like it, or just looking to have more leadership influence or build or expand a current business that you're doing or looking at, this would be a great book for you. So stay tuned for the tips. Let's jump into it. So this is a short read. Um, as far as books goes, I wouldn't say it's top of my list as a favorite, but I think there's a lot of great highlights in here that uh, anyone watching will appreciate or find a way to apply to their business or their life. So let's jump into the first one. So first off, he starts off the book um, about an antidote talking about, when I was a teenager, my father taught me an exercise in decision making. He took a piece of paper out, drew a line right down the middle, uh, and on the left hand side he wrote the word pro, and on the right hand side con, uh, and then he told me to list all the good reasons for making that decision on the pro side, and all the bad reasons for making that decision on the con side. And then he asked me to evaluate both sides of the paper to determine if my decision would be a poor one or a beneficial one. A lot of people call that the Ben Franklin cl close. It's great in sales, it's great for any type of decision making. And John Maxwell goes on to say, like any business, network marketing has a pro and a con side. Many times I've done this decision making exercise with this industry. Uh, and my discovery? For most of its people, the pros of network marketing far outweigh the cons. So he's a big fan of that type of business model. Um, you know, he's talking about one thing he likes about is enhancing people's income. Listen to this. The best way to control your destiny is to control your dollars because money gives you options. Or to put it into mathematical terms, the lack of money equals the lack of options. But when, you out, when your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep causes your downfall. So, you know, eight, something like eight out of 10 people are living paycheck to paycheck today. So whatever legal, ethical, moral means you or anyone has to be growing their income is a very wise thing to be doing. Uh, number two, it provides options for your life. Options, right? Very key to always have options. Often we don't recognize the restrictive situations we place on ourselves until we move ourselves into unrestrictive environments. Number three, you start on a level playing field. Uh, number four, you uh, let you earn while you learn. So look at this quote here. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. So we always have to start somewhere no matter what it is. Learning a new instrument, building a business, uh, learning how to network, learning how to talk to people, sales, whatever. So of the five powerful laws, whatever it's called, the power of five, uh, power number one is growth. All right, are you growing? And remember, we always like to say here, if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. Yeah, gotta be harsh and look at it that way. All right, so check out this list of, uh, of things that, that John Maxwell would do to grow. He, he's been very purposeful over the last 30 years of finding someone who's very successful in all walks of life and having lunch with them and really picking their brain and getting value out of that. So here's the questions he asks at that type of lunch. So if you're thinking about going to college, if you're in college, you're looking for a career change, a business opportunity, uh, being a better parent, a better person of your faith, a better athlete, whatever it is, seek out people in that area and have an informational coffee, lunch, phone call, web chat, and, and really see how you can grow and get some of their influence and then go influence others. Here's the questions. What's the greatest lesson you've ever learned? What are you learning right now? How has failure shaped your life? What have you read that I should read? What have you done that I should do? Who do you know that I should know? And the last one, how can I add value to you?
Wow, powerful questions. I would suggest writing those down and really seeing who in your life you can go practice those with. All right, look at this. We grow to the size of our challenges. If you haven't been challenged much in your life, your leadership level and, and probably the value you bring it probably is going to be a lot lower than other people. Uh, and when you're going through a challenge right now or in the past, be thankful for it. Well, it's not always sunshine and rainbows, but the, the light at the end of the tunnel gives you a lot of growth, which will bring a lot more value to your life and to others. Everything worthwhile is uphill. No one has ever coasted to success. No one has ever had accidental achievements. You must climb to the top of that mountain. Your climb, no, you have to climb, sorry, you climb to have great relationships. You climb to build a business. You climb to grow. Expect challenges. If it's easy, you should get queasy because what comes easy won't last long and what lasts long won't come easy. Your focus is forward. You always got to be focusing on what's ahead. When you're moving forward, there are a lot of distractors and distractions. You will notice when you look back, you will see uh, your complacent friends who want you to stay the same. To your left are shiny objects that look good but offer little substance. And to your right are people who leave thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Keep your head straight and continue walking. I don't know about you guys, but in my journey in the last 10 years of going back to school, getting some higher education, trying different corporate jobs, and building out my own financial services business, um, I've seen friends I used to hang out with a lot, and I still call a friend to this day, but they're in the exact same boat today that they were 10 years ago in their early to mid 20s. It's very sad because if you're not growing, you're dying. And uh, you know there's gonna be a lot of emptiness there that, that they gotta make up for. But teach of their own, right? But don't be that, be growing. Hey, be like Nehemiah who said to his distractors, I am building a wall, I cannot come down. You are not leaving something, you are going to something a business that will add value to you and those around you. I've never known a person who kept looking back at yesterday to build a better tomorrow. Yesterday ended last night, let it go. Recently, I was asked how to get rid of the negatives of my past. My reply, keep your mind off the things you don't want by keeping your minds on the things that you do want. Look, you could be dating or trying to date or looking for marriage or children or whatever. If you're focused on the past, the past people, the past things not working out, you're just going to attract more of that. How are you ever going to move forward? And you might miss the opportunity for moving forward if you're not focused and looking for it. Your atmosphere is affirming. So let me ask you a question. Who brings out the best in you? And now let me ask you one more. How do they do it? Usually the answer to the second question is encouragement. Encouragement is the oxygen of the soul. So are you encouraging your employees, your friends, your family, your kids? Are you doing it enough? There's probably no limit on how much you can do it, recognition and encouragement. So we need to make sure that we're giving that oxygen to the people around us. Uh, look, viewing no's as one more step towards yes and, and making failing your friend is definitely a path for success. Okay. Uh, how do you know when failure is your friend? When you value the lessons it teaches you. Don't count your losses, count your lessons. Whenever a person shares with me their disappointments and losses, I always ask, what did you learn? You can always turn lemon into lemonade. You can always turn a challenge into a lesson. So power number two, connection. All right, let's look at this. So, uh, here are just a few things I find valuable because I believe they will benefit you too uh, from past books that he's read. The rare individual who unselfishly tries to serve others has an enormous advantage. A person's name is the sweetest and most important sound in their language. Success in dealing with people depends on a sympathetic grasp of the other person's viewpoint. To be interesting, you need to be interested. 
and talk to someone about themselves and they'll listen for hours. And that's a refresher. We, we reviewed uh, Skill with People on this channel before by Les Giblin. Refresher, that's the exact same thing. It's all about the other person. How do you bring value? How do you listen to them? How do you make it about them? Uh, after listening and talking, oh wait, this is the wrong one. We'll go to this page, connecting practices. Almost everything we become and accomplish in life is with and through people. Therefore, the ability to connect and create relationships with others is the most important skill we can learn. Okay? With all the emphasis our culture places on education, you might think that knowledge is the greatest asset to build your business. However, the Carnegie Foundation discovered that relational skills are far more important if you want a bright future. Their study found that only 15% of a person's success is determined by job knowledge and technical skills, while 85% is determined by an individual's attitude and ability to relate to people. So it's all about people. Even if you're an introvert, you can learn people skills. Even if you think you don't like people, you can learn it. Even if you love people, you gotta learn how to make it all about them. All right, practicing valuing people and letting them know it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That's from Simon Sinek, right? From his book, Start With Why. Excellent book to read. Um, second, compliment people in front of other people, especially their family and friends. Praise people in private and you add. Praise people in public and you multiply. Every person has a desire to be recognized for the good things that they do. So don't hold back on genuine praise. Author Jim Rohn said, Start with where people are before you try to take them where you want them to go. It's good. All right, we're halfway done, guys. Hang in there. And I'd love for you in the comments to write so far what stood out to you most and which of these tips so far that you've heard that you're going to utilize in your business or in your life. Okay, check out this little poem here by Jeffrey Gittimer. Here's the, here's the rock, paper, scissors game of connecting. Relationship is more powerful than price. Relationship is more powerful than delivery. Relationship is more powerful than quality. And relationship is more powerful than service. Moral of the story, it's all about relationships. Who you know and how you treat them. So my friend Jimmy Blanchard, a very successful business builder, says, The common thread in great organizations is valuing and respecting people. Instead of putting others in their place, put yourself in their place. When you're there, others will know that you cared enough to move toward them instead of expecting them to move toward you. Walking close to people helps you quickly recognize their strengths and their weaknesses. Seven motivations of people. Okay, seven motivations. Number one, purpose. All right, people are motivated by purpose. People want to do what they were created to do. Number two, autonomy. People want to have freedom to control their lives. Okay, motivation number three, relationships. People want to do things with other people and have community. Number four, progress. People want to experience personal and professional growth. Okay, there's a steady, consistent, determined progress forward. Uh, number five, mastery. People want to excel in their skill and in their craft. Number six, recognition. People want people to recognize their accomplishments. And number seven is money. Last on the list, number seven, money. People want to become financially secure. So it's super important, obviously, to have options and to have money gives options. But there are other things that come. So if you're a manager of people, it's not about the money. Not only, right? There's six other things. Um, and you're building a business. You got to keep all those motivators intact. And each person, some of those motivators are going to be a stronger desire than others. And if you can feed more uh, in those categories, that will do better. Power number three, mindset. We have about seven more quotes here. Okay. So mindset, we've talked a lot about that lately. And the, the best book on that was um, What to Say When Talking to Yourself by Shad Helmsetter. But here's a chart I want to share with you. You probably can't see it, but get the book. You can check it out. Average people see only their point of view. Successful people see the big picture. Average go into 
in too many directions. Successful focus on the main thing. Average are stuck inside their box. Uh, successful explore options and innovate. Average hope for the best. Successful face the facts and build upon them. Average let life happen to them. Successful proactively plan their lives. Average allows circumstances to limit them. Uh, successful see possibilities everywhere. Average don't learn from mistakes. Successful stop, reflect, and learn daily. Average follow the crowd. Successful challenge popular wisdom. Average try to make it on their own. Successful no success requires a team. Average focus on helping others. Successful benefit from adding value to others. Average try when they feel like it. Successful try when they don't feel like it. So are you living an average and ordinary life? Or are you thinking and producing or having the activity to produce an average life but want to be successful? You caught yourself in any of those categories on the average, you got to recognize it and make that shift. Number four is the power of leadership. Okay, Leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. You only need a title to be influential, right? Uh, everything rises and falls with leadership. And how well you lead will determine how well you succeed. Okay? How do you gain influence with other people? The answer is to intentionally add value. Always, always, always add value. Okay? Um, look at this story. Sitting beside me was Daniel Lubitsky, the founder of Kind Bars. When asked a question regarding his success, he said, I'm not an optimist. I'm an actionist. While everyone else is thinking negative or positive about something, I'm taking action on it. That kind of mentality sets people up for what I call a pre-win. That pre-win is taking action, getting into the game, not the results. You have to get into the game to have any chance of winning the game. Guys, take massive, massive, massive action. It's the, the secret to success. Okay, four more. Uh, the vision of a champion is someone who is bent over drenched in sweat at the point of exhaustion when no one else is watching. It's easy to do stuff when your leader, your teammate, your friend, your business partner, your, te your teacher, whoever, your kids, someone's watching you. But what are you doing behind closed doors? Are you eating too much bad food and junk food? Are you skipping the gym? Are you not reading? Are you uh, being negative? Are you not prospecting as much as you should? Are you not making as much phone calls as you should? Are you not sharpening the sword? Are you playing too many video games? What are you really doing? And champions are doing it and doing it hard even when no one's watching. Okay? Lift people by adding value to them. Who will I add value to today? What do I think they need from me? What can I say that will encourage them? What can I do that will help them improve their life? What am I learning that I can share with them? What am I doing that would inspire them, and after we are together, will they know I added value? Great questions to, to, to ponder and then put into action. So here's some action steps to lead yourself. Stop accepting your life, start leading your life. Stop doing what only is expected, start doing more than is expected, and stop doing important things someday, start doing important things every day, today, do it now. And to lead others, live what you say, lift people by adding value to them, love the people you lead, and look for potential leaders to mentor. And the last thing I'll leave you with, leave you with is power number five, significance. What is your best thought on how to live a fulfilled life? I'd love to see that in the comments below. Hey guys, if you like this video, if you don't want to miss out on the upcoming book breakdowns, please like and subscribe. The next one's going to be a marketing book called Made to Stick, and then have some good business books, people skills book, leadership books, sales, and a few others just sitting there waiting to be read and reviewed. Um, let me know what you took away from this, and join me in the pursuit of greatness.